Hey, what's up there, Digital Surfers? Today I'm going to show you how you can test your map sensor with or without a wiring diagram using just the multimeter. Alright, for the purpose of this video, I'll be using this bigger multimeter that I got for $25 at Harbor Freight so you guys can see the bigger numbers better. But you don't have to use something like this, you can just use this very basic one, which is for about $5 at Harbor Freight. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is to find our MAF sensor. And our MAF sensor is usually located somewhere between our air filter box and our throttle body. And on this car, it's located right down here on the air filter housing itself. So next you just want to follow the wiring that comes out of your MAF sensor and then find your MAF sensor connector. And next you want to remove your connector. Alright, before we get any further, I think I need to mention that whenever you're using a multimeter to test uh, sensors and wiring on your car, especially if you're testing hot wires, uh, it's important to follow the testing procedure step by step and not skip any because otherwise you run the risk of uh, potentially damaging your wiring harness or your sensors. Alright, so a quick explanation of how your uh, mass sensor works. Uh, your mass sensor basically receives constant voltage and ground from your ECU and then uh, it changes that voltage based on how much air is uh, flowing past it and it sends that signal in the form of a DC voltage back to your ECU. And then your ECU uses that information amongst other sensor inputs to do things like adjust ignition timing, uh, adjust fuel injectors, amongst other things that help your engine run smooth. Alright, so as you can see we got four pins on this uh, wiring harness uh, and similar to our throttle position sensor we're going to have one of these pins is going to be for our constant voltage supply from our ECU which is either going to be 5 or 12 volts and the other one is going to be our constant ground and the other two are going to be our signal wire and our sensor ground. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is to find our constant voltage supply from our ECU. So we're going to get our multimeter, turn it on, and then turn our settings to 20 volts. Since we don't expect to uh, see anything more than 12 volts when testing for voltage, we go to the next higher setting, which is 20 volts in our case. Next we'll ground our black test lead, and we want to make sure you get a good ground on this. Next we'll get in our car, put the key in the ignition, and turn the ignition to the on position without turning on the engine. We do this so that our ECU sends ground and voltage to our MAF sensor. Alright, next we'll grab our other test lead and we're going to touch each pin and the one that gives us 5 or 12 volts we're going to write down as our uh, constant voltage supply wire. Alright, here we go. We'll start with the uh, bottom left. We got nothing. Top left. Nothing. Top right. And here we go. We got 12.6 volts. And there, we found our uh, voltage supply wire. So now we'll just flip this over and write down the color of the wire, which is red in this case, as our uh, constant voltage supply wire. Alright, so next we're going to try to find our constant ground wire. And we do that by getting our multimeter and putting our settings to ohms and measuring resistance from each pin to ground. And I'm going to choose this last setting on this multimeter, which will not only give us a reading, but also give us an alarm or a beep whenever we have ground. Alright, so while checking for ground, you want to make sure you exclude the last pin, which was our uh, voltage supply wire, because you don't want to check the resistance of a hot wire, okay? So, we're just going to start from the right bottom pin and work our way around. And <laughs> there we go, first try, we got it. So our uh, right bottom pin is going to be our uh, constant ground wire. So we'll flip our connector around and write down the color of the corresponding wire, which in our case is going to be this black and white. Uh, wire for uh, constant ground. Alright, now that we've identified two of the four wires that go to this MAF sensor, the two remaining wires, one of them has to be for your uh, sensor signal wire, which carries the voltage signal sent from your MAF sensor to your ECU, and the last one has to be your sensor ground wire. So basically now we're just going to reattach our connector and then back probe the two remaining wires. And it's not going to matter exactly which wire is which the, of the remaining two because once we hook up our multimeter to that, if we have them the wrong way around, we're only going to see a negative on the side of this. But in order to get a more accurate uh, reading, uh, if, you, if we do get a negative sign next to our voltage reading, all we have to do is just switch the, uh, the test leads around. And paper clips are great for back probing these connectors. Just make sure you get them in all the way and uh, you press them in all the way and you make good contact. And next we'll use these alligator clips to attach our test leads to the back of our connector. Since we're going to be measuring voltage, we go back to our multimeter and put our settings back over to 20 volts. Alright, so what we're going to do next is to get in a car, start the engine, and then measure our voltage at idle. At idle, this car should have about 1 volt. Okay, before I start the engine, I think I need to mention that uh, the readings I mentioned, the 1 volt at idle for this car, 
which is a four, 2001 F-150 with a 4.2 liter, is at idle when the engine is properly warmed up. Now, I'm going to be doing this on a cold start, so the RPM is going to be a little bit higher, therefore, it's gonna, our reading is going to be higher, higher than 1 volt, but then, if it's a good MAP sensor, it's going to come down, decrease gradually, and then sell around 1 volt. There we go, problem solved. All right, so it's been a couple of minutes and it's still around 0.85 to 0.9 volts, which is about right. But now we're just gonna, I'm just gonna play with the throttle plate. I'm gonna slowly open it and we should see a gradual increase in the amount of voltage being put out by our mass sensor. And then once on the way down, we should see a gradual decrease. What you're looking for is that steady increase in the amount of voltage being put out by the mass sensor as the RPM goes up and as the RPM goes down you want to see a steady decrease. You don't want to see the voltage jumping around, especially you don't want to see it uh, like if you're raising the RPM you don't want to see it to go down before it goes back up and vice versa once uh, when you're decreasing RPM. And with that said, I'm going to wrap this video up. So if you find any of this useful, please give this video a thumbs up. You may also want to check out some of my other videos, especially the ones where I use this multimeter to do other testing and inspecting procedures. I'll put some on the screen as video links so you can just click on it. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.